Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic and uh, another intriguing Sudoku. And we're going back to sandwich Sudoku this time, which I'm looking forward to. Um, first of all, I do want to mention the uh, Patreon reward, of course, the PBN Institute. Um, you can qualify for your degree in Japanese sums and paint by numbers there. Thanks to Panthera and the Asylum. We're very grateful to them. Also on Patreon still, um, Zeta Maths, um, Two Truths and a Lie. Simon's solve of that in a video. You can watch that there, uh, but he is going to put it up on the channel. But if you can't wait, it's over on Patreon. Um, now, what else have we got going on? We, we were streaming on Sunday night. That is the plan. 10 p.m. our time. You can work out the time zone, hopefully, um, from the UK. And uh, we're looking forward to going back to the Oberdin, maybe nearing the finish. I don't know. Maybe not. We're only really halfway through all the deaths. So there is a there is a good old PG warning on that. Now, what else have we got? We've got all our apps, of course, including Sandwich Sudoku, the original app that we brought out um, 18 months ago. Feels like that. Not absolutely sure. Um, and six other apps that we've released since then, all available on the links under the grid, as well as Sven Sudoku app. So that is all good. That's all available there. And the merchandise. So if you want to get yourself a water bottle that says Cracking the Cryptic, and gives you a knowledge bomb on the back, that is where to go as well. All under the video, but the first link there is to this puzzle. Who Killed My Sandwich by Enye, who is, it's his debut. It's the first time he's written to us. He's 16, but a big fan of the channel, he says. Um, so we are thrilled about that. I think it's a he, I don't know. Sorry, they say. Um, and anyway, this is a mix of sandwich and killer Sudoku. So just to run through the fairly straightforward rules, and if you enjoy this, do get our sandwich app or our killer app. They're both excellent. Um, anyway, normal Sudoku rules apply. Clues outside the grid show the sum of the digits between the one and the nine in that row or column. So in this column, uh, the eight shows that between the one and the nine, the only digits that appear add up to eight. So they could be a single eight, a two and a six, or a three and a five. Um, in Enya's presentation, some of these numbers were at the bottom or the right, but I can't see a reason for that, so I didn't replicate it. Apologies if it mattered for any reason. I mean, it certainly doesn't in solving the puzzle. Um, now, there's also killer cages, of course. Now, none of these can contain repeats, given their shapes and normal Sudoku rules and where they appear. So they just add up to the number given in the left-hand corner. So those are the rules. Testing says not too hard. So um, you can check the video length as well to see I haven't either disagreed with that or had a huge lapse of concentration. They do occur. Um, but I'm going to try now. I'm really looking forward to this. Let's get cracking. Um, yeah, and what we sometimes do is we look at big sandwich clues. We've got two 32s and two 33s symmetrically placed here. And what I know about those is that the... Right, here's the first knowledge bomb of the day, that the numbers from one to nine, which populate every row, column, and box of a Sudoku, add up to 45. Now, if you take out the one and the nine, which are kind of the crusts of the sandwich, the maximum total of the others is, second knowledge bomb, 35. Now, 32 and 33 are very close to that. What they mean is, in the case of 33, that the only number outside the sandwich, not the one and the nine crusts and not in it, must add up to 35 minus 33 is 2. So there's only a single 2 outside the sandwich, and that must be at the top or bottom of this grid. Um, what I'm doing therefore the same applies with 32 by the way there's a single three outside it it can't be a one and a two because one is part of the crusts so that wouldn't be a potential outie um, so in these columns the sandwich sum is going to be actually six digits long it can never run to the edge of the grid the sandwich sum because it one or nine will block it and 
whether it's six digits there or six digits there, one and nine cannot appear in those five cells. So I'm colouring cells in the puzzle green to show that one or nine cannot be there, and that often helps. Now, where are one and nine? Now that's interesting. One and nine must both appear in that group two by two. Now, the fact that I'm highlighting these doesn't mean we have a Fistemafel ring puzzle. I really don't think that's applying here. Um, but one and nine in each of those boxes must be confined into those two by two regions, which means that we know that these regions do not contain one and nine because they're not in those two by twos. And that's really good for this 21 cage. It adds up to 21 in three different digits that don't include nine. So immediately we know that's eight, seven, and six. And that's a bit of a start. Um, now, the one and nine in these columns, which we're not given clues for, must appear in these cells. Ah, but look, we are given a clue for row five, and it's a 17 clue. Now, again, if you start from eight at the top and add up how many digits need to be in a 17 sandwich, eight plus seven isn't enough, so it can't be two digits. It's got to be at least three, and we can now tell that those three are here. And let's make the crusts red, that's what I like to use. And we know that that's a 1-9 pair in the row. Now I'm wondering if we can work out how 1 and 9 are disposed here. There's a zero clue in the top row, so 1 and 9 could... Yeah, so yes, 1 and 9 will be together in one of those pairs of cells, I think. There's tens down here. Now, one and nine could be together. In fact, they can't be apart. If you had one there and nine there, then you couldn't make up these ten sums in the, in the box. So they must be together, either there or there. And that means the one and nine are together. Ah, right. If we had one and nine there and one and nine there, remember those outies in columns eight and nine. There are three and a two, and they'd end up here and here. But three and two do not add up to ten. This is the third knowledge bomb for the day. They add up to five, which is a different number. So those cannot be the outies. Therefore, they are the one and nine. Those are in the sums. These are the one and nine, and these are the outies. We can actually fill in three and two. Now we know well, we know in two ways, I think, that there's a 1-9 pair here, because obviously the outies here can't be 2 and 3. They'd clash with those. So that must be the 1 and 9. And there they are. And these are not 1s and 9s. And these two have the outies, 2 and 3. And we've got digits in the grid. Now, we've also got rows in which we've placed both 1s and 9s, so we can green everything else out. There's a very neat little pattern we're left with, a little circle in the middle. Um, now that 11 cage is going to be either 4, 7 or 5, 6. Oh, let's fill in these 1, ah, right, these are all 1s or 9s, but look, this is in a 9 cage, so it's not a 9, or else this digit would have to be a 0, and we're not having that. Um, so we get 9 there, that fixes the 1 and 9 down here. This is quite an unusual layout. Most people who create sandwich Sudokus try and have it so wherever 1 and 9 are, they're kind of helping. If you get them in a column, they feed into rows, but here they don't. They're done for those columns and rows. They don't actually inform the others. Um, don't know how to disambiguate the others. What else have we got? Oh, in this box, we've got a 4-5 pair. Ah, this 6 cage can't contain a 1 because we've used up the 1s for the two columns. So that's got to be a 2-4. We can fill those in. This now can't have a 2 or a 1 in it because they're both used up for the columns. So it's either 3-7 or 4-6 one way around or the other. Um, this could be one six eight, or it could be. 
Ah, if that was a 9, no, these can't add up to 6 because they'd need a 1 or a 2. So that is a 1 with a 6, 8 pair in it. Can't be a 9 because of that. So that's a 9. This can't actually be 6 or 7 because that, oops, because of this 6, 7, 8 triple. So that is a 4 or 5. Oh, what about this cage? If that's a 9, ah, then that would have to be a 4 and that would be a 1. But this can't be a 1 because it's green. Um, well, that's good enough reason. So that's not a 9. That's a 1. And that gives us the 1, 9 at the top as well. Now, it's either 1 plus 4 plus 9, which it can't be. So it's 1 plus 5 plus 8. So we've got lots getting done here. Now, what about this 17 sum? No, I think there are various ways of doing that. Oh, we've got a 21 sum. OK, well, again, these three cells are clearly required in that 21 sum. In fact, we know exactly what they are. It's good, just like that 21 sum. So let's put in the crusts, one and nine. This is now an eight, seven, six triple. How are we gonna make up the 17? Oh, that's very pretty. The biggest numbers we can put in green cells in this box, not eight, seven, six anymore. They must be five and four, which add up to nine with the maximum value from the 876 triple, so we get an 8 there. Oh, that's a very pretty resolution, and we're getting a nice picture here, even though this isn't part of the uh, paint by numbers um, pack. And then we can place 2 in the middle row, and we've got a 3 and 7 to go. Ah, this 7 cage can't have a 1, they've been used up, can't have a 2, so it's 3 and 4, and that fixes the 7 and 3 we just put in. Um, we've got a six to place in this box. Can't be in those cells, and that six, seven, eight triple says it can't be in those. So six there. Then we get a one, five pair, which fixes this cage at the top. This has to be a five. Can't be an eight or six from there. I don't know about, oh yes I do. I could have put the eight in the cage, then I can fill in six and eight. Um, this has become a six with a four. I think it's reasonably straightforward from here on. I mean, it hasn't been difficult to this point. It's just been quite interesting. It's a very cleverly designed puzzle, I think. We've still got a bit to do in the middle as well, so let's not say we're done. Um, that's a four, and that's a five, seven pair. Now in this, I don't know, in this cage, we can put eight in there. That's not eight, that's not six. Eight, four, six, nine. This is five. Ah, oh, that's seven, and this is five. We can finish off the column with another five. Then I've got a nine, seven pair to go in here. Five is a naked single at the bottom. That's a three, two pair. This can't be eight, five, and it also can't have a nine in it. Same sort of logic again. So that is a six, seven like that. That gives us this whole triple four and eight here. Yes, we can place them. Oh, we've learned what the seven and six is. We've learned how to do the... No, we haven't learned how to do the four and five. Wrong. We've learned how to do the one and five from that five. No, still left with... Surprising sometimes what Symmetry leads you to expect you'll be able to do and you can't. That five sorts out the four five. Then this is two or three, which makes... Oh, that seven is looking at the six, seven pair. We've got six and four to go in the row. Sorry for the mistype. Um, and that doesn't resolve anything else. Right. Now we're going to have to use these final clues in one of these three places. So let's look at this eight clue because we've got the one. So it's got to be two and six and nine there. Um, so we get a seven there, nine there. I presume this is going to be one. Yes, look at this six clue. We need a one nine pair in those cells to make that six work. And that's one there and nine there. So 
Well, let's just finish off the ones and nines so that I can color everything. There we go. I think that's all the ones and oh, all the ones and nines. So I can color those red. I can color everything else green. And this becomes a three. That's two, that's three, that's two, that's three. Lots of twos and threes to do. Three, and in fact, that's all we have left to do. Three and two, and a two there. And that finishes off in quick time. So that's a very nice... Um, who did kill your sandwich, Enya? I don't know, but... Uh, interesting little shape in the middle with the, the greens funneling into it through that nine. Um, but uh, that's a really nice sandwich puzzle. Some very symmetrical and pretty logic, not too difficult. So as I say, if you've enjoyed that as a sandwich, do check out our Sandwich Sudoku app. Our newer apps sometimes combine sandwich rules with the rules for the app as well, so you can find a few more in those. Um, and of course, if you like killer puzzles, there's the Killer Sudoku app too. So do check them out. Um, good fun. So thank you very much, as always, for watching us on Cracking the Cryptic. Nice quick video tonight. I hope Simon did a long one. And, uh, we'll see you again tomorrow, and we'll be streaming on Sunday. As it is, bye for now.